Okay, so do you know enough algebra to solve this equation? Well, let's find out. Actually, if you know how to solve this, go ahead and pause the video, put your answer into the comments section. But if you don't know uh, the algebra to solve this, don't worry about that either. I'm going to show you exactly how to solve this type of algebra equation. Now, those of you that are in a class like Algebra 2, College Algebra, this is basically uh, more like second year algebra uh, in terms of uh, the topic that we're going to discuss here. So if you're in Algebra 1 or Pre-Algebra, stick around anyways because this is not that uh, complicated and eventually you're going to see this topic. But uh, we're going to get to all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It's my passion to teach mathematics. And uh, hopefully, you know, you can hear the excitement in my voice when I talk about math. Now, uh, there's one thing that I kind of learned over all these years of teaching math, and that is all students can be successful in math. And yes, I'm speaking to you, those of you out there that struggle in math, okay? So if your attitude is, I hate math, I never do well in math, I fail math, listen, it doesn't have to be that way. What you need is encouragement and great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe you're uh, studying for some sort of special test that has math on it, things like the GED, SAT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam. Or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses uh, that span all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. You should be taking your own awesome math notes, but you do need... Uh, notes as, you know, what are you going to study from if you don't have math notes? You certainly just can't remember all of this stuff in our minds. I can't do it, so I know that you can't do it either. So learn how to take great notes, and things will get much, much better. Uh, but in the meantime, you can use my notes if you need them. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you the answer to this problem. And then, uh, of course, we're going to discuss exactly what's going on here. So this is LOG, but we say this log. Log of x plus 1 is equal to 2. We're trying to solve for x. x is equal to 99. Okay, so how did you do? Did you get that right? Well, that's very impressive. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and A plus plus, a 100% and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Okay, so what is the topic here? Well, as I kind of indicated in the beginning of this video, uh, this is uh, more like a second year algebra um, math topic that you would study. And we're talking about something called logarithms, okay? So L-O-G, this refers to a logarithm. And if you have your scientific calculator handy, if you have one, if you don't, don't worry about it, there is a button on your calculator that says L-O-G, and that button is a logarithm button. We'll talk more about that button here in a second, but it's referring to logarithms. So we need to figure out what is a logarithm, and then, of course, how do we uh, exactly solve this equation. Let's go ahead and talk about that now. Okay, so here is our problem, and before we start actual steps to solve the problem. Let's talk about a couple quick things here. So uh, logarithms or logarithmic functions, okay, have an inverse, okay? It's inverse. Uh, the inverse of a logarithmic function is an exponential function. That's basically what I want to say here. And the inverse of an exponential function is a logarithmic function. But here's what I want you to kind of um, know. Anytime we see a logarithmic equation, okay, we want to express that as an exponential equation. And anytime uh, we see an exponential equation, we're going to use logarithms to solve. So let me just state this again another way. When we see uh, a logarithmic uh, equation, okay, you got to be thinking in terms of exponential. Uh, and I'll show you what exponential uh, function looks like here. And when you have an exponential function, you got to be thinking in terms of logarithms. Let's see an example of this right now. Okay, so here is an exponential equation, all right, this is what we would call this, and here is an equivalent way to write this. Now, we're going to talk about how this is done in just one second, but an exponential equation is something like this, 2 to the x power is equal to 9. We're trying to solve 
for the variable when the variable is in the exponent location. So let's look at this here. 2 to the x is equal to 9. This is much, much different than this equation. x squared is equal to 9. So don't confuse the two. Right? So this is a quadratic equation. To solve this, we simply just go and take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to positive negative 3. No problem, right? But that's because the x is... Uh, in the base. Let's just review powers here real quick so all of you know. So 2 to the third power is equal to 8. This is a power. This big number down here is called the base, and that small number up there is called the exponent. The entire thing is referred to as a power. So 2 to the third power, okay, 2 is a base, 3 is an exponent, and the answer is 8. Okay, so just, you know, it's good to just define all these little things just in case some of you out there don't um, remember that. All right, now let's just take a look at this equation here, 2 to the x is equal to 9. Uh, for those of you who are new to logarithms, let's suppose we were trying to solve this equation. So how could we figure this out? Well, let's just start testing some values for x. How about 2 to the first, okay? If we had x is equal to 1, well, what's the answer? It's 2. All right, well, we're looking for 2 to some powers 9. That's not going to work. How about 2 squared? We'll let x is equal to 2. Well, 2 squared is 4. Okay, so we're getting closer. We want 2 to some powers equal to 9. How about 2 cubed? Well, that's 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. Oh, well, boy, so we're getting super close. So let's go up another one. How about 2 to the 4th? Well, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 16. So we went too far. So the correct answer here, 2 to the um, some power is equal to 9. It's got to be somewhere between 3 and 4 and closer to 3, right? So how do we find that exact number? Well, we need logarithms, okay? This is uh, extremely critical uh, in mathematics. And what we're trying to do here is solve an exponential equation. And again, when you're faced with an exponential equation, you're going to use logarithms. But in this case, we have a logarithmic equation, a logarithmic equation, so we need to be thinking in terms of exponents. But this is a quick little kind of introduction to these concepts. Now, as I indicated, every exponential equation can be expressed as a logarithm, and every logarithm can be expressed as an exponential equation as well. And let's go ahead and see how this is done because we're going to need to understand this um, uh, to solve this particular equation. All right, let me erase this here so we can focus in on what's going on. All right, so here is the, the deal. All right, so here, this is an exponential equation. This is the base. This is the exponent. And this is the answer, okay? So, for example, if I had 2 to the third power, right, that 2 would be the uh, base, 3 would be the exponent, the answer is 8. So think of it in terms of this. We have a base, 2 an exponent is equal to an answer. So we can express this exponential equation as a logarithm, but we have to follow this format. We write L-O-G, okay? There is another type of logarithm. It looks like that, L-N. That's for another video, but that's what we call the natural logarithm. That's the only other uh, notation that's different than this. Well, well, I'll discuss that here a little bit more in just one second. But here's the format. Okay, this is not that complicated. So you write L-O-G, and then we're going to put the base down here, and we call this a subscript in mathematics. So this little number down here, this will be the base. Okay, so whatever this value is, is going to be that little number. And then the answer is going to be right here. Okay, so this thing or this whatever this is equal to is, uh, is we're going to write it right there. And then it's going to be equal to this number, this value, the exponent right there. Okay, so you can see here I have log base 2. Okay, there's the base right there. The answer was 9 or is 9. Okay, and the exponent is x. All right, so just kind of uh, remember this. An easy little phrase that I like to kind of use to uh, uh, help students remember this is log bacon and eggs. So if you like bacon and eggs, which I love bacon and eggs, as a nice little healthy breakfast, there you go. Bacon and eggs. Just remember B, A, E, and those are the positions for these uh, various numbers. Okay, so again, I need to understand that we can write a logarithm as an exponent, uh, exponential function, 
and vice versa. So now that is going to be the key to figuring this out. Okay, so here's our problem. There's one other little tiny detail we have to address. We have LOG, uh, and then we have X plus one is equal to two. So some of you might be saying, well, hey, Mr. YouTube math man, I don't see a little number down here. So you taught me all this stuff, but where's the little number? Okay, because that little number is the base, right? Well, I'm gonna explain that to you right now. Anytime you see LOG and there's nothing next to it, there's no number, for example, like log base seven or log base two, and all you have is just um, LOG by itself, well, what we're for, uh, referring to is the common logarithm. There's actually a little 10 there, okay? So LOG, um, it's pretty universally accepted uh, that LOG by itself is what we call the common logarithm. There's a little 10 down there. It's log base 10, okay? But you won't see it written this way, all right? So this LOG button on your calculator is log base 10. So while we're talking about your calculator, let's talk about this LN button. There's another button next to this LOG button somewhere on here. And this is, again, talking about a scientific calculator. This LN button is log base E, okay? E is a very important number in mathematics. It's kind of like, you know, uh, pi, right? Represents a number, E represents another number. So this is log base E, very special number. So it has its own function, all right? So this is uh, the ln or natural logarithm. This is what we call the natural base E. But again, this is for uh, different conversations. By the way, if you need help with logarithms or if you wanna learn more about this, let me just kind of give you a couple quick suggestions. One, I have additional YouTube videos on this, uh, these uh, various topics, but my, I would really suggest like formal instruction of mine. So uh, check out my Algebra 2 course, College Algebra course. And if you are a math superstar and you're in pre-calculus, I teach this and much, much more. Okay, so, so right here, we don't write the 10, but there is a 10. So now we have log base 10 and x plus 1 is equal to 2. So now we're thinking, okay, bacon and eggs, B-A-E. This is the base, this is the answer, and this right here, this 2, is the exponent. So let's go ahead and write this now, okay? All right, so log base 10, x plus one is equal to two. 10 is the uh, base, so I wanna put that over here, okay? I could put this on the left-hand side, it doesn't make a difference. Left is equal to right, right is equal to left. So 10 is the base, two, or let's just do it in order, uh, bacon and egg. So the x plus one is the answer, I'll put that there. And then two is the exponent, right? bacon and eggs. So if you, um, you know, when you're learning this, it's uh, just good to write that down, that log BAE, and that way you know, all right, uh, this is, well, let's just do it over here real quick so it could be nice and neat about it. Bacon and eggs, okay? Log base answer is equal to exponent. So here, your base to a certain exponent would be equal to an answer. So as long as you remember the, um, these two basic uh, patterns, then you'll be good to go. All right, so now what we've done, again, we're faced with a logarithmic equation. We're gonna write this in terms of an exponential equation and solve this, and when we solve this, we're gonna get the answer, and this is gonna be pretty easy stuff. Let's go to this now. All right, so here we have x plus one is equal to 10 to the second power. 10 to the second power is 10 times 10, that's 100. So x plus one is equal to 100. All we need to do is subtract one from both sides of the equation, and there is your lovely answer. X is equal to 99. Okay, so hopefully this wasn't overly difficult for uh, some of you out there. And if this is uh, your first time uh, being introduced to logarithms. Well, that's odd. I hope, you know, hopefully I'm pumping up this topic enough because it's awesome. I mean, there's so many problems that um, we can solve with uh, logarithms. Again, uh, to actually solve an equation like this to, for the variables and exponent we need to use logarithms, okay? Logarithms are our friends. And just remember uh, the um, respective um, kind of function that you need to be thinking about when you see logarithms is exponential functions because they are inverses of one another. 
All right, so let's go and wrap up this video. Again, if you're interested at this level of mathematics, this is second year algebra, but again, if you're in pre-algebra, algebra one, you're eventually going to see this. And now you have a jump start on this topic. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.